main reason why we're saying likelihood is not an important part is that simply if it is critical infrastructure, uh, it is very likely uh, or almost guaranteed that it will be targeted by somebody. I think in, uh, if you're in a regular company, not, not critical infrastructure, then you don't know whether or not you're a target or not. Let's say you're a retail company or something like that, right? So you are trying to figure out how much you should spend and likelihood helps you adjust that. We'll get to the spending question in a minute, right? Um, but by definition, if you're critical infrastructure, if you know the way adversaries work in the world, both large nation state adversaries from countries that aren't friendly with you, and now increasingly crime syndicates who have very talented and well-funded uh, cyber attackers as well, if you're critical infrastructure, they're targeting you. It's just a fact. Therefore, the likelihood is one. The second part of likelihood uh, is that they're not just going to generically touch anything. They're going to look for things that really matter to you. Those are the things you really need to protect. And so that's why we say that statement, which sounds a little bit controversial, because usually likelihood is part or probability is part of risk management. In critical infrastructure, uh, likelihood, when you factor it in, is the quantity of one. Now you have to look at the other parts of it. What are the impacts? What are the consequences? And what can you do? You know, I'm not going to answer that question as directly as you're asking it. I've, we are all familiar with the question, how much should we spend? I'm going to twist it a little bit and say, on the topic of spending on cybersecurity, if you have one euro, uh, or we could say a million euros, to spend on cybersecurity, where should it go? And uh, I would usually say, I think the right answer is, mainly spend that on people. Mainly spend that on helping your people, the cybersecurity staff, uh, but also others. I think I might have mentioned on stage procurement people, people that are, that are buying things that are going to get deployed. Um, the other staff, training your senior people not to click on all the links all the time, right? I think if you're going to spend money, whatever the budget is that you've determined, uh, I would tend to lean towards putting it into your people, the most important part, uh, before throwing more technology dollars, dollars or uh, euros at technology. As Sam and I mentioned, everybody is trying to do the best they can with hygiene, doing all the best practices for cybersecurity they can, right? But even so, companies that are doing a pretty good job, somehow ransomware is getting smarter and it's getting in. And it's starting to encrypt uh, or brick you know, their critical data and some of their critical applications too. So once, if you accept that that's the case, then the number one thing you want to do is to be able to stand back up. Uh, people say, uh, do we back up? Do we do backups? Usually there's somebody in the company that go, oh yeah, we back stuff up. But they're skipping over some steps, like do you practice backing up? Do you actually keep your most important data and applications not, on, not online in a convenient place, but maybe somewhere, I'm not sure the camera's seeing my hand way over here, but someplace that's inconvenient uh, and not reachable by the ransomware. And then do you practice, say, okay, you guys, today we're gonna bring the, everything back online uh, assuming that we've been attacked. And it's called restoring to bare metal. And unless you do this, there's gonna probably be problems. Many companies that think that they have uh, backups, when the ransomware hits them and they actually have to do it, they find out that the configurations are wrong and they have nothing. So they, they had a false sense of security. Uh, so practice restoration, practice restoring from backups uh, again and again is the best thing you can do. <laughs>